Hello, this is Aaron from the Cisco Tech Enterprise Switching Team. In this video, I showcase the process to operate a standalone Catalyst 9300 switch in install mode. This process is valid when operating from iOS XE 16.62 and later releases. If operating from software version 16.61 or 16.51a, a different process is needed. Privileged exec access to the switch is needed for the operate. Once in this mode, let's verify the current iOS XE version that the switch is running. To do this, use the show version command and go to the last lines of the output. As shown, this is a C9300 24U switch running software version 17.65 in install mode. This version is more recent than 16.62, so we're good to continue. The operate process consists of five steps. One, clean up all installation files. Two, copy the new image to the flash memory of the switch and validate the integrity of the bin file. Three, set the boot variable. Four, install the image. And five, verify correct image installation. Let's begin. The first step is to clean up all installation files from the flash memory of the switch. So we ensure that there is at least one gigabyte of free space. Install remove inactive command takes care of this. It will take a few moments to look for Unus installation files, then we'll ask for confirmation. Type Y and enter to confirm. Once the cleanup is finished, verify the free space in the flash using dir flash pipe include free. If the bytes free are more than one gigabyte, we can move on to the next step. The second step is to download the target software image and copy it to the switch. To download the target software image, go to software.cisco.com slash download slash home. Then, using search bar, search for the specific switch model to be upgraded. In this case, it is a Catalyst 9300 24U switch. Dash A or dash E indicates the license level, but the software image is the same for both, so selecting any of them is fine. Select iOS XE software. Then, look in the left panel for the target software version. For this video, I use the current Golden Star version 1794A. The MD5 hash of the image can be obtained by hovering on the image file name. A pop up will show the MD5 checksum. Click on the copy icon right next to it and save it somewhere, as this will be used in the next step. Click on the download button of the file and accept the license agreement. The download of the image begins. Once the software image is downloaded, place it in a USB drive or an FTP or SAP server so that it can be copied to the switch. Use the copy command to copy the image to the switch. For this example, I use an FTP server to copy the image to the switch and hit enter to use the same destination file name. Once the image copy has finished, verify that the file is in the flash memory with dear flash asterisk pin command. The final part of this step is to validate that the image is not corrupt. For this, use verify slash md5 command, indicating the path to the image file and then the md5 checksum that was saved in the previous step. When the switch finishes computing the md5, it shows verified in case both hashes match as this example. If they didn't match, an error will be prompt, indicating the image is corrupt and it needs to be copied again to the switch. The third step is to set the boot variable. For this, go into global configuration, reset the boot variable with no boot system command, then indicate that the packages.conf file is the boot file with boot system flash package.conf command. Use the no boot manual command to make sure the switch is set to auto boot and save the boot settings. To verify the right boot variable and manual boot configurations, use the show boot command. The fourth step is to install the image with install add file activate commit command. This command needs to point to the new software image that was copied to the flash of the switch in step two. This command first adds the image. Once all PKG files as well as the configuration file are extracted, it asks for confirmation as a reload of the system is needed. Use Y to continue. 
Then it activates the packages and finally commits them. After this point, the switch reloads. After install command and reboot, an auto rollback timer of two hours starts. This timer will stop once the user logs into the switch after the reload. If there is no login and two hours pass, the switch will reboot and roll back to the old software version. It is important to log in to the switch after the reboot to stop the auto rollback timer. The fifth step begins when the switch comes back up from the reload. Enter privilege exec mode and verify correct installation of the new image. Use show version command to validate that the switch is running the new software version. Also, their flash command can be used to locate the PKG files and the configuration files. At this point, the software image has been successfully upgraded. Do not hesitate to contact TAC support if you have any questions and check the TAC video portal for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.